Hey guys, welcome to Mojo Grip. If this is your first time, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. And today's video, I'm gonna start with a backstory, all right? So two years ago, sometime two years ago, when I was flying in California, one day I was just doing pattern work. And I remember I was just, I was traveling back. I was basically taxiing back to the wrong way to go, go ahead and uh, go do another pattern. And I looked to my left, and I see this object in the sky just coming in at lightning speed. And for a minute there, I, I got nervous. I'm like, does this guy know that he's coming in to land or what is he doing? Because he was so low to the ground, but he was coming in so fast. Now, the reason why that made me nervous is because, you know, in a training environment, you typically see like old Cessnas or old Pipers. And if you spend time there long enough, you have an idea just how they look in the sky whenever they're coming into land, how fast or how slow they're going. On this day, this guy, this object that I saw was coming in twice as fast. Like it was coming in really fast. So I got nervous. I'm like, holy crap. And before I looked the other way, the airplane was already touching down and it was still going really fast on the runway. And that day I was just mesmerized. I was mesmerized. I was like, what airplane is that? So I asked around and fair enough, someone told me, oh, that's a glass air. I'm like, a glass air? And I, so basically I went home that day and I just researched the crap out of a glass air. I tried to find as much information as I possibly could. So I find out that a glass air is... An experimental airplane two-seater just amazing the performance of this airplane and from that day on guys I was in love so that brings me to the real point of this video when you think of the glass air this is a high performance airplane very fast very nimble and probably takes a little bit more skills to fly as a civil aviation pilot you dream all the time about owning your own airplane I know I do okay so and whenever you're ready to take that step, one of the things that you're going to think about or that you're going to consider is how fast your airplane is, okay? Now, the first thing, obviously, is your mission. How, what's your general flight going to be like? So based on that, you go ahead and find your airplane or the right airplane for that mission. Now, for me personally, you know, as much as I enjoy flying, typically, I don't want to spend more than two to three hours in a cockpit, okay? And three hours is pushing it. Two hours to me is ideal. Anything past two hours, I get a little uncomfortable. If I'm buying an airplane today, that's one of the things that I'm going to consider. I'm going to consider, okay, for my general mission, it has to be within a two hour window. So assuming, for example, um, my general flight plan or my general mission is, say, 300 miles, okay? If my general mission is 300 miles, then I know for me personally, I want to find an airplane that would get me from zero to 300 miles within two hours. All right, so that's one of the first things I'm going to look at. So with my experience flying a DA-40, I know that the airplane travels around 120, 125 knots per hour. So say for example, I'm considering buying a DA-40 for my mission of 300 miles. If I get that airplane and I'm traveling again, around 120 knots, that's about 130, 140 miles per hour, or say I push it to the highest, I'm traveling at a max speed 130 knots, so I'm around 142, 143 miles per hour. If I use a DA-40, I'm, again, I'm pushing it to max, and I'm burning around 10, 11 gallons per hour. On my 300 mile journey, I'll probably get there in a little bit over two hours with a DA-40, which is which is fine. I would totally do that. But then take a glass air. A glass air has more useful load. You know, it's a more, it's a high performance airplane, much more faster. Okay, so with the DA40, I'm cruising at 120 knots. In a glass air, I'm cruising at literally double the speed. In a glass air, I'm traveling at over 250 miles per hour. So the same trip, the same trip would take me. Uh, the same trip that takes me a little over two hours in a DA-40 would take me just a little over an hour in a glass air. That's l almost half the time. So, when I and the cost of both airplanes, 
uh, right now you can get a DA40 brand new probably like four hundred five hundred thousand dollars used you can get it around two hundred two fifty or even like really older or, or uh, uh, older versions you can get them for around a hundred one fifty thousand right you have the same amount of money you can get a used glass air you can get a glass air anywhere from hundred one fifty to two hundred or two fifty thousand depend on the build and the features on the airplane but the point is your high performance glass air will get you to your destination much faster literally in half the time than a DA40 will and you'll spend roughly around the same again the fuel burn would be around the same you're burning 9 to 11 gallons per hour on the DA40 you're gonna be burning around the same thing from what I've read and what I've uh, heard so far about the glass air you're burning around the same amount of fuel traveling that fast in a glass air so obviously for me if I'm gonna buy an airplane today based on my mission I'm probably gonna go for the glass air right no <laughs> okay and here's the reason why guys so again put head to head these airplanes will cost you around the same thing uh, one is certified one is experimental but one is way faster than the other but if I'm buying an airplane today as a new pilot, I probably would not go for the glass air. And here's the reason why, okay? So when you think of flying in general, as a pilot, the rule of thumb is you have to be ahead of your airplane, okay? When you start keeping up or trying to keep up with your airplane, then there's trouble there. And being ahead of your airplane basically means if that airplane travels XYZ miles per hour, and you're going to be at a certain place in five minutes say for example you get a weather notification or weather update in flight that says oh ten minutes from now in your path there's gonna be some clouds or some thunderstorms brewing so as a pilot automatically your brain should go to that location that's ten minutes away and you should be able to look at your instruments or whatever resources you have available and check for another route or another route so that's what it means to stay ahead of your airplane. That being said, when you think about it, the smallest or the, the, the slowest airplane, say on average, the average civil aviation airplane would travel 100 miles per hour. Okay, so flying a, a machine that travels that fast is already tasking enough. So now think about all the things that you have to do when you're flying. So if you've seen my other videos, I talk about literally having to do so many things when you fly unlike driving a car where you just get in you put your car in gear and then you drive but in an airplane there's so many things you have to do when you're flying your foot is working your hand is constantly one hand on the on the stick or uh, the yoke and one hand on your power always and you're constantly either writing something changing radio talking to radio and whatnot so my point is it's tasking enough for you to fly just the basic airplane now when you add speed to that like a glass air that means you have to do a lot more work all right so painting the same scenario say you're flying a da40 right and you're staying ahead of your airplane and you get a weather warning or whatnot for a DA-40 that's traveling maybe 140 miles per hour, you're able to change your course or act swiftly. Now, we've already established that the glass air travels twice as fast as a DA-40. If you get the same notification in flight while you're flying a glass air, you have half the time to react. You have half the time to do whatever you got to do and to get yourself into a safe, uh, safer path. So that's my point. Just because an airplane travels faster doesn't mean it's more ideal or it's the better choice for you, especially if you're a no pilot. Okay, so these are the things you have to think about. A faster airplane means faster brain work, means you have to act faster, you have to react faster when you're flying. And also, one more thing that's even more important about the speed of your airplane is how slow your airplane flies. No matter how much fun you're having up there, you still have to come down at some point, right? So when you're coming into land, you have to be able to put that power back, slow down for you to be able to land safely. Now, on a normal airplane or say in a DA-40, typically when you're coming into land, your approach speed, at least when I fly, is between 70 knots 
to 75 knots ideally around between the two right you have a nice perfect land and if you keep your airspeed between 70 and 75 now the stall speed which is your slow speed all right your stall speed for a diamond da40 is 49 knots your stall speed for a glass air 70 knots so maybe you're asking what do i mean when i say stall speed your stall speed is the speed that you're traveling or that your power setting when the airplane stops flying okay let me explain in this all right so this is an airplane right and you have your wings on both sides the reason why this object is able to stay in the air is because you have air your prop the air being pushed from the prop is flowing over your wings all right that's why this airplane or this object is able to to fly now if that process was to be interrupted any way shape or form this airplane is not going to stay in the air any longer. So say, for example, you shut down your power, you're going to have less air. You're going to mess with that aerodynamic of air flowing over your wing. And so that's why airplane manufacturers always have a speed setting. They tell you, listen, if you set your power this low and you travel this slow, this airplane is going to stall. So whenever you have air stops flowing over this wing, it's going to stop flying. The same thing on this side is going to stop flying. What typically happens when you stall an airplane, it does this and possibly do this and go in a spiral spin. So back to the glass air. I already established that in a DA-40, when you're coming into land, you're usually at a power setting of about 70, 75 knots to come in and land perfectly. Now, if you try the same thing in a glass air, you're gonna stall that airplane and you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. So that's my point. Those are the two main things specifically for this video. Now, there are obviously other reasons why, you know, one airplane is better or better fit than the other. Speed is one. The glass air is also considered a high performance airplane. It's also considered a complex airplane. So these are skills that you'd have to build up over time before you make that transition. So that's my point for this video, guys. Not necessarily a good thing that an airplane is fast and would get you to where you're going faster. There's a lot of things you have to consider. So whenever you're ready to make that purchase, don't just say, man, this airplane is going to get me to my destination faster. So let me buy it or let me fly it. For me personally, would I still buy glass hair? Absolutely. This is an airplane that I still want, but it's not something that I would purchase at this time because one, my skill level is way, way lower than what I would need to fly glass hair. Maybe 10 years from now or sometime down the line when I've gained enough experience, enough skill to be able to fly a complex airplane like that, then I'll jump the broom and get a glass hair. But hope you guys learned something. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do so. We're close to 1,000 subscribers, so help me get there, guys. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.